Hello, my name is Anne, and I'm one of the team leaders of the 2019 Stony Brook IHM team. I'm going to get you somewhat acquainted with Snapgene in this video. We'll be going over tools that Snapgene provides you, how to navigate Snapgene, as well as how to view and annotate DNA sequences. So, what is Snapgene? It's a program that's supposed to make your life easier. Snapgene sponsors iGEM teams and is a really important tool. Snapgene is a molecular biology software which lets you perform time-consuming and expensive molecular techniques without charging you for doing things like PCR, golden gate electrophoresis, and constructing your desired recombinant plasmid. First things first, we're going to go over how to upload and view DNA sequences in Snapgene. Things you're going to need for this are Snapgene, and you're going to also need some website where you can download plasmid files from. We used AdGene. So once you've found your, you found your plasmid on AdGene, um, under the picture of the plasmid, it's going to be the words enlarge and view all sequences. Press on enlarge. You should see a bigger picture of the plasmid pop up and scroll down and find the word Snapgene. So once you click on that, you're going to download the file, the plasmids file. And once you do, go back to the screen with Snapgene, press on open, and then open files, and then locate the plasmid file you just downloaded. So once you click on that, um, you're going to see another window pop up, and that should be your plasmid in Snapgene. So that was just how to get a plasmid into Snapgene. So what if you want a DNA sequence? So I actually already have a DNA sequence up in NCBI. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to copy that DNA sequence. And then once I do have it copied, I'm going to go back to Snapgene and I'm going to press new DNA file. This should open up a window where I'll paste that DNA sequence and after I have everything I can actually name that file. I'm going to name it cauliflower mosaic virus and I can also indicate if it's linear or circular and I also can check detect common features. So I'm going to press OK and that's going to open up another window where it's going to show you the um, common features that have been detected by Snapgene and you can choose whether or not you want to keep that um, detected feature in your final DNA sequence. So I'm going to add that and you're going to see your DNA sequence pop up in a new window in Snapgene. Now we're going to go over how to navigate Snapgene. You should already have your DNA sequence, and attached to the DNA sequence should be these restriction enzymes. In your other window with the plasmid, there should also be these lines connected to restriction enzymes as well. If you click on the restriction enzyme, you should see a DNA cut site. In a column on the leftmost side of your window should be these icons. Um, the first icon is adjusting the, your view of restriction enzymes. The next one is for features. After that is primers, then translations and DNA colors. The icons under DNA colors just toggle how you see the map specifically um, from the base pairs of the, the number of base pairs of the restriction enzyme to whether or not you see words that explain a feature. On the bottom of the window should be a magnifying glass, the words map, sequence, enzymes, features, primers, and so on. These toggle how you see your DNA sequence or your plasmid. One of the ones you might be using a lot are maybe the magnifying glass to zoom in and out of your plasmid or to sequence where you can see the base pair by base pair um, DNA sequence. Next thing we're going to look at is dealing with restriction enzymes in Snapgene. So let's say you want to find an enzyme or two that cuts only once on the plasmid. Click on enzymes at the top of the screen, enzyme set 
hover over enzyme set and you will see another drop down menu. These are sets of enzymes that you can click on to see on your plasmid or gene of interest. For an enzyme that cuts once, you can usually click unique cutters or unique 6 plus cutters to see those. These two sets generally have the same enzymes shown. When you change your set of enzymes, you should see a little tab in the lower left hand corner change to the name of your enzyme set. If you want a more specific selection of enzymes, let's say I want to only see what enzymes cut in a certain part of my DNA sequence. I'm going to click and drag on the DNA to select a, selection, uh, a section of DNA. Next, what you can do is you can either control E or click on enzymes again and then click on choose enzymes. This will have a window pop up where you narrow down and pick what enzymes you want to see on the plasmid. First, I will narrow down the search. So I click the checkbox next to choose from and select unique cutters because I only want enzymes that cut once in the area of DNA selected. Going down the window, I'm going to click on the drop down button next to enzymes cut and click only in my section. Under that is number of cut sites where I will select the middle choice. Under the number of cut site selection, you can select what kind of end you want. Enzymes cut differently and you can select the best kind of overhang depending on your choice of ligation. On the right should be a specification of the enzyme recognition sequence. It can be specified to palindromic, uninterrupted, and non-degenerate. You can also specify how long the recognition sequence is as well. You can either make an enzyme set to come back to or you can just click OK to see the enzymes on your plasmid. Click Save under the Chosen Enzymes box to save the chosen enzymes as a set or click OK on the bottom right of the screen. Now all that you will see are the enzymes you wanted. If you didn't click on Save before when you were specifying what enzymes you want to see and you only clicked OK, simply click on Enzymes again and in the drop down menu should be Save Enzyme Set. Click that and name your enzyme set. Now, we're going to go on to one of the last sections of this video, and that is learning to add features and how to add primers. So let's start off with features. Now let's say you want to annotate your DNA or highlight some features of the DNA. Let's say I want to highlight a section of DNA that I'm going to look into later. I'll first highlight the area. I can do this by clicking and dragging, or if it's between enzymes, I can click one enzyme and then control click the other enzyme. Click features and then add features. A new window will pop up that allows me to name the feature. Toggle what color it is and what it looks like. You can also select what kind of feature you are labeling. If you want, you can also add a note. You can also do this by selecting your desired area and press Ctrl T. This is the shortcut to adding features. Now let's move on to primers. Let's say I've decided to make my own primers and I want to indicate where they are in my plasmid or DNA. First select your desired sequence and then click on primers and after that add primer. A new window will pop up that allows you to name your primer, switch up its direction, change the color, and manipulate it however you want. You can also add a description. The keyboard shortcut for this function is Control R, which you type after selecting the DNA. Another feature that we're going to go over that you can do in SnapGene is that you can manipulate the base pairs of the DNA sequence. You can select a part of the DNA sequence and you can actually select it to delete it. 
um so that's what i did here and then you can also add in base pairs to the dna sequence so select wherever you want to add in those base pairs click in that spot and just start typing and then you can add in those extra base pairs that you want to add along similar lines as dna sequence manip manipulation you can also search for a certain dna sequence in your um whole plasmid or your gene of interest or you can also look for other different features so all you have to do is press Control f and then you can toggle what you want to look for so you can look for dna um enzymes features and then once you've finished you can type in what you want to look for and it will show up highlighted on your plasmid or gene of interest the last thing we're going to go over in this snap gene tutorial video is how to run a simulated gel electrophoresis this can be used as a reference for when you run your own gels click on tools and then simulate agarose gel the shortcut is shift Control g a new window will show up and what it will show you is a gel on the left side with a ladder already on it and eight other wells which you can add in other DNA sequence to. In the first well, Snapchain will already have the file that you clicked simulate agarose gel on. I was on a plasmid, so it will show me the plasmid. Since the plasmid is round and not linear, Snapchain will ask me what I want to cut the plasmid with. I'm just going to choose any um, restriction enzyme to cut it with. Usually you'd want to cut it with a unique cutter if you want to cut it once or if you want to cut it twice. Two unique cutters or maybe a dual cutter. In the other wells you can also select different DNA files that you have downloaded and run those on the gel as well. You can use this to compare. 